Good evening, everyone. Welcome to the Bali. Welcome to the Forum on European Culture, uh, which is themed Act for Democracy. My name is Absaline Hehakaya. I'm head of cinema uh, here at the Bali. And uh, a couple of weeks ago, I um, had the idea to ask one of the esteemed guests of the Forum on European Culture to pick his favorite film, the film of which he thinks uh, it reflects the European situation we live in today best. And uh, this guest is uh, Shrechko Horvat. He's a political philosopher, founder of DiEM25. And he immediately uh, wrote back to me and said, well, then we have to screen um, uh, children of men. So, yeah, we did that. Uh, I arranged the rights. And then he said, let me know when it's online, and I will tell Alfonso. <laughs> and it, it might be a nice detail that we were uh, together with, uh, with Dutch culture and also with IFFR and with uh, Dutch distributors. We were trying to get a big guest to the forum, a film director, to reflect on the European uh, situation. Uh, and we failed terribly. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> and then um, uh, at one point, uh, two days ago, Schreczko told us, uh, yeah, Alfonso is coming. He booked a ticket. And so, without further ado, uh, <laughs> I would like you to give a big hand of applause for Schreczko Horvat and Alfonso Cuaron. What do we do now? <laughs> Good evening. Uh, I'm extremely glad uh, uh, to be here, and uh, not because I am here, but because Alfonso is here, and we are together here. Uh, and uh, so the idea is just to shortly speak about the movie and why it matters today. Uh, so let me start by an anecdote. Uh, when <clears throat> My, I told my sister that I'm going to Amsterdam to this festival and that uh, we will be, that the organizer asked me to pick up a movie which in my mind describes in the best way the current situation in Europe but also beyond. And then my sister asked me, but you know, I love that movie and I love Alfonso, but why are you showing this old movie? And then I told to my I didn't talk, but I will tell it, tell it to my sister. Uh, uh, I didn't speak to her uh, recently. I think uh, why, why, why Children of Men, in my mind, is a masterpiece. Uh, uh, it's a masterpiece uh, uh, and the best movie about our current predicament, uh, precisely because the older it gets, the newer it is. In a way, you know, at that time, when, when, when I watched it, it was 2006, it was uh, as if it was a movie from the future about our dystopian future. But if you watch it, and then, you know, people called it, uh, and they still do call it a science fiction movie, uh, uh, but if you watch it today, and you will watch it, uh, uh, and we will watch who will watch, uh, uh, so you cannot get out. Uh, <laughs> Alf that was Alfonso's joke. <laughs> he is the one, the dictator. Uh, if you watch it today, it's a movie about, it's not a science fiction. It's not a science fiction movie. Uh, so let me just shortly, uh, in a few points, say why I think that precisely today the movie matters. Uh, I think the first reason is, uh, uh, of course, the movie is a prophecy, I would say, uh, because what you have there is this state of exception uh, in Great Britain, which is now the only country uh, which is still somehow surviving, uh, although there is no fertility, no new children are being born. Uh, so what they do as a reaction is building walls uh, uh, and, uh, well, militarizing uh, whole Britain. Uh, you can even see this is, uh, this is also why, what I really like in Children of Men is basically the background. The background uh, where just watch, when I watch it now again, uh, a few days ago, I was basically just looking at the background and stopping and then when you, what you can see when you watch at the posters or the graffiti and so on, what you will find, this is, it's, it's amazing. So you will find, for instance, Britain only for the Brits, 2006. Uh, uh, refugees, uh, uh, helping refugees is 
giving aid, shelter or helping refugees is illegal. I mean, fast forward from 2006 to Hungary this week when Viktor Orban is trying to impose a bill that anyone who helps the refugees uh, will be criminalized. And so many, many, many other things in the background. So look, when you watch the movie, look at the background. Uh, uh, and this is what I find amazing, uh, uh, the, the research you did uh, uh, for the movie, which is going a step further than the book. Uh, uh, but to give a more theoretical point, uh, uh, why I think it describes our situation today is a I think because it beautifully shows uh, uh, something what I would call normalization. Normalization in the sense that uh, uh, how it, you know, when there is a scene in the movie in the cabin uh, when the main character, I mean the good thing with the movie which is from 2006 is that we can spoil it, I hope. How many people here didn't watch the movie? Uh, well, okay, I will not spoil it. <laughs> you will have to complain to Universal or who is it? So anyhow, when you have a scene in a cabin, I will not tell what happens there, you will see newspapers all around the cabin, and when you read the newspapers, you will read the following headlines. Refugees marching on Europe. Remember, this is 2006. Refugees in the meantime marched, you know, through the Balkan route and so on, and are still coming. Then there is nuclear explosion in Africa, nuclear explosion in Kazakhstan. Uh, that luckily didn't happen yet, but when you put all this together, this is what I like, this kind of semiotics, because I think what you succeeded to do is really uh, to, to make reality more real, in the sense to take the already existing signs of a future catastrophe, which is a present catastrophe, put them together and uh, logically go a step further what would happen then. And I think this normalization is the most uh, scary thing which we have to understand today. Uh, normalization in the sense that you can see refugees in cages, that you can see refugees who are being deported or bombed by planes, planes and so on. And uh, I think we are today living in this moment, uh, which is not, I don't want to talk so much about what is now happening in Europe, but to understand what normalization means, uh, uh, it means Imre Kertes uh, 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 described it beautifully in, in, in his memoirs, uh, where he said how to explain, you know, and he survived uh, 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 the concentration camps, uh, and Imre Kertes says uh, uh, that normalization is uh, it consists in steps. It happens step by step. And then he made a comparison and he said, you know, when there was a train which was leading us into the concentration camp, I was, in the, I was standing and thousand people were standing and I became aware that each step I make, you know, there are only steps what he can make at that moment, nothing else, but each step was leading into the concentration camp. And it goes step by step, and he said this happened also when they went into the extermination uh, 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 parts of the concentration camp, in the sense that everything that was there was steps. I mean, you can see it beautifully also in, for instance, recent TV series uh, and the book, excuse me? Yeah, yeah, I will, I just want to, 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 to make a few points more, yeah, don't worry. Uh, <coughs> So, uh, this is one thing, normalization. Uh, the other things which I wanted to mention is, uh, uh, okay, Brexit. You, in a way, you have Brexit already predicted in the movie. The other thing which I find really interesting, since this is a festival about art as well, is the arts aspects. You know, there is, re there, there is now here, uh, a few meters away, an exhibition uh, 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 from Bank by Banksy. But you know, it was Alfonso who, who 2006, you have the uh, kissing bobbies at the beginning of the uh, arcs, uh, the, what is the name, the, the, the mu uh, arc, of arc of arts, which is I think a very uh, uh, disturbing moment of the movie, you know, what's the purpose of art if no one is looking at it. Uh, uh, so I think uh, uh, this is, I mean, these are just some of the reasons why I find uh, uh, the movie interesting. And one last point, uh, because we had this conversation yesterday, I, I, I I said that the, the, some of the scenes of the movie reminded me on the war uh, in uh, Yugoslavia. Uh, and then I found out, because it is this kind of scenes where you have uh, a lot of single shots, uh, which are basically like embedded journalism in a way, even with blood on the, on, the, on, the screen, on the camera and so on. And then Alfonso revealed to me, which I didn't know, that he was in Sarajevo precisely during that time. So you can see this realism, I would say it's hyper-realism in a way, you know. Uh, anyhow, I stop here. I have many other points. 
how do you look at the movie today? Uh, 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 and how was the process uh, of making the movie in the sense of being confronted with all these newspapers and everything and the news which were kept? Do you still do it today, for instance? Well, uh, yeah, that was the, 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 the genesis of, of that, of, of Children of Men was actually uh, September 11. I was in Toronto. Uh, I was at the film festival in Toronto. I was with Diego Luna and Gael Garcia Bernal because we were presenting a film I did called Mama Tambien. And uh, when it happened, September 11, and we were stranded in, in, in Toronto. And it was very clear that we were entering a new century, a century in which uh, the rules in which the previous century had played were not going to be at play anymore, any longer. And I really wanted to understand where this century was leading. Uh, and I think it's very important to say this part of the process because the movie, uh, uh, it, it was the 10th birthday of the movie, I think this year or last year. And there were a lot of articles about, about the film. A film that, by the way, when it was released, nobody cared, nobody saw. And right now it's having like a comeback. And uh, <laughs> I know I'm happy. I'm, I'm happy that, 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 that you guys are seeing it and that you're presenting this film. Um, but uh, it, when, when we were doing the film, it was more trying to understand, and, and in all these articles we were talking about the prophetic aspect of how I was a prophet, and I was not a prophet. The thing is I was talking with people that were not prophets, they were people that were just actually aware of what was going on. Well, the media, liberal media has taken us into a, whole, uh, into a beautiful narrative of progress, there were other people that very, were very concerned about what all of these different uh, tendencies that were happening all around the world. And it was like, a, like three or five, it was seven, like seven years of, 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 of reading and of talking with, with some of these great people and, uh, and trying to create uh, I, we didn't tell that to the studio, obviously, but we, were, we went to, to do an essay more than making a film. We never set up to do a science fiction film. I'm glad that you mentioned the background because uh, in the film, I think the background is what tells the story. The background, in many ways, is m way more important than the foreground. And we didn't want to do any uh, explanation, we didn't need any exposition. We wanted to Precisely for that, if, if you start with expositions about something, about why the world is the way it is, you turn it into an special event. If you don't explain it, and you just, uh, uh, you, you, you create that sense that you're talking about normalization, you know, in which people are just living their lives as if it's normal. Everything is normal, they're used to it. And now actually the ethics of everyone has changed, they have changed. And that was the, actually the infertility was nothing but that infertility of ethics, if anything. Uh, we didn't set up to do a science fiction movie and everything that, that, that you will see, all those backgrounds, were based upon references. We want to do the last 15 years of images that had been iconic in the media a lot of them, them in the, of the Balkans. There were Guantanamo some images as of, well, in a way. Uh, of Guantanamo. There were like uh, some stuff of Sri Lanka. The, uh, the you know the, of the Tamil uh, of the Tamil and Tiger kind of uh, uh, fight. Um, a, a, a lot of stuff that happened in Mexico. Terrorism as well. M massacres. Uh, obviously, terrorism that was already on the rise. Well. In Europe, they, it was always been around uh, in the U.S. So uh, it was like a, we wanted to do it as something that that feels about the present. We didn't want to talk about the future. We wanted to talk about the present. Something that, but we said, okay, let's take all of that and then just bring everything into one single location, meaning the U.K. and London, and that was pretty much the the, the setup of how to uh, of of doing the film. Yeah, what, what I, now we spoke about and we agree basically on, on, on the background, but also let's speak a bit uh, just about the, how do you call that, foreground. Uh, so the narrative, the story, uh, uh, because I think it contains some, a very important lesson uh, for activists. 
uh, uh, and how to get out of the current deadlock, which is going more and more in the direction of children of men. Uh, so it's on the one hand, it is fertility, uh, uh, which is quite literal, so no new children can be born, but it's also metaphorical in the sense that uh, everything is dying out. So it's not only that Europe is dying as it is today with low, lower natality and so on, and that the refugees and the barbarians are coming, uh, but it's also very metaphorical in the sense that ideas are dying. Uh, so it's an infertility of ideas, I would say. And then it's interesting, uh, 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 I thought about it only later, uh, uh, about the main character, Theo. Uh, who basically is, you know, he is this what happened to many on the left in Europe, for instance, after the Syriza experience of 2015, uh, they went into this, what Walter Benjamin calls uh, left-wing mel melancholy, you know. Yeah. Oh, we were all hoping that the Messiah came and the Savior and so on. Oh, fuck, but it's not the Messiah and nothing actually, everything had to change so that everything can stay the same. Uh, and there was huge resentment afterwards and many activists, even after the decline of the World Social Forum, even, you know, or even 68, you know, when you have people, participants of 68 speaking about 68, it is very often looking back to that time. So the main character uh, is this uh, resignated, uh, resentiment uh, guy who doesn't believe that changes possible anymore. So, and here you come back to fertility, because what, what you do beautifully, I think, is, I think one of the central topics of the movie, and would you agree, did you think about it when you were doing it, is hope. Uh, uh, but hope not in this kind of op naive optimism, uh, but what Terry Eagleton would call hope without optimism. So there is no, the situation is really bad, and the guy, even until the end, doesn't have much hope. He just, uh, Clive Owen, you know, he just goes, is a, in a sort of a road movie following, you will see what, I will not spoil, spoil it. Uh, and in the end, it's a bit ambivalent, the end, I would say. You know, whether, because it's still the, very dark, you know, the, 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 the camp is being, uh, I will, uh, okay. <laughs> No, yeah, the, I'm the, sorry, I'm sorry. No, the, 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 the book, the, the film is, is, is very loosely based upon a book that I didn't read. Uh, <laughs> no, it's true, and, and I didn't read because I got the, in, in, what, what they do is they send you sometimes synopsis, like log lines, and the long line is what inspired me, but immediately I had a whole, a whole story in my head. So, uh, and I, I find the premise already great, uh, but uh, the, the book is more about upper classes in the UK and, and uh, like the it's not so dramatic as the movie, in the sense well, that... Well, there are no immigrants. In yeah, yeah, the, yeah, yeah. The, yeah, yeah. the, the notion of the immigrants doesn't exist, that is here is basic, terrorism doesn't exist, all, all of that stuff that, that is, is, is stuff that was suggested by the book because, yes, and I'm very grateful to, to P.D. James um, because of that, but I didn't read it. So I just... Not even to, 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 to today's moment. No, 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 I didn't read it because I, I, I didn't want to, 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 to derail for what... I already had in my head when I, when I do that. My co-writer, Tim Sexton, read it. And I just asked him, is anything to, to, to adapt from this? It's not, it's a completely different thing. But we like the, most of the names of the character are the ones in the book, you know, and, and the concept is there. And so uh, the, 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 but it was, um, a, yeah, I mean, maybe it's also my background and my, my understanding and my belief, what I wanted the idea of someone who had believed and has lost also, there was this whole thing of infertility of, of, of beliefs. And uh, it's, it's a guy who doesn't be, that, that used to be an activist and now is a disenchanted uh, alcoholic. My Mexican friends are outside waiting for <laughs> anybody that goes out. And well, she didn't hear it. That means <laughs> that <laughs> she's finished. Yeah, okay, so. <laughs> Gael, Gael is waiting outside. No, or... Chapo. <laughs> okay. Anyway, but I, I guess, look, it's, it's just a pity. I, I, I find it so weird talking about films before the, screen, before the screenings. Yep. You know, you know it's, it's because it's way more interesting. It'll when stop you, now, soon. I, yeah. I, yeah, no, I think, because I think it's way more interesting at the end, when these things happen at the end, um, and also because there can be interaction about, you know, questions or whatever, but uh, maybe next time we'll, we'll, we'll do it this way. Um, but you, I, I mean, I, I don't know if you have one to... 
I, I can always, but I think we, 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 I will spoil too much, so maybe, uh, well. Well, I know that it, you, I, I think it's better, but if anybody has a question or anything before we start rolling the, the whole thing, yes? Uh, there is. Just a sec. Oh, thank you very much. Yeah? Okay. Okay. Uh, I think it, I totally agree with everyone probably here in the audience, 90% that the film is a masterpiece. Um, I have a question. Why did you choose the intensity of the, uh, a lot of the scenes in way of the camera usage? Uh, because it's, yes, it is, I think, science fiction, a utopian film, but why the intensity? Why so many close-ups? Why the, the car scene? Um, please explain more about the camera. Yeah, actually, if you see it again, uh, there are very limited close-ups. There are not that many close-ups. Uh, 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 because part of the reason it was not, and, and that is connected to the, your other thing about the, continue, the, 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 long, the long shots, that the, the film is comprised of mo mostly long shots. Um, that has, I, I had been doing it for a while. Before that, Itumama Tambien was the same thing, in which, um, in many ways, is to give the same weight to the character as to the background. You know, you, you, if you go into a close-up, you're, you're, you're giving more uh, predominance to your character from your background. And here I wanted the balance, and in many ways, to get the, ca the character just blend into the, into the background. The, uh, uh, also, I wanted the sense of real time. You know, when you do long shots, pretty much you're allowing uh, um, a perception of real time. Uh, that, that we wanted to, to precisely to cut out the feeling of, of the artifice of so-called science fiction. And I'm not against science fiction, fiction. it's just that I was, uh, I, I didn't want to distract the audiences thinking that we were seeing a speculative future. Uh, I wanted them to try to see the present in the film more than trying to, to think about a, a, a possible future. But I think that's, uh, you can raise the hands, I will just short comment. I think that's the, that's the definition of good science fiction, I would say, that it precisely becomes the present. The yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. There's another question here. Uh, I think one of the film's great unsung uh, virtues is its production design, its sets. Can you talk a little bit about that, how they came into being and your process of working with your art director and production designer? Yeah, well, it was um, part of the time that that team, Michael Wright and I, we, we spent uh, the years before the production in London, and uh, and then I, I because when we wrote the script, nobody went to do it, and so I end up doing Harry Potter has nothing to do with this, and uh, but then after Harry Potter, that gave me the the free ticket to do this film. Um, and while I was doing Harry Potter, just to go to the studio, you cross through the unflattering part of London. And it's the unflattering part that also is where uh, most of, uh, uh, of, of people from, of, uh, from dif different cultural heritages, they live. You know, you go in through the, the neighborhoods of where, the, where, where the, 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 the people from the Caribbean, you know, the British Caribbean people live. Um, a, a places, a places of, of from uh, from Arab countries, you know, living in London, and you start seeing that there is like a parallel society that was going on it, at, at that time, and I guess it's been for decades that is that has been going on over there. That is, is almost like it's two different cities. So um, that was a, a, an important aspect. And then the other thing, and that was the work with the production designer, but a lot that was Chivo Lubeski with me. Lubeski is the director of photography, who also have done The Revenant, and he did Gravity, and done a, a lot of amazing films. One of the best cinematographers in the world. And he's Mexican, and uh, we grew up together in Mexico. And we were talking about turning London into Mexico City. In, in other words, to bring the third world into, into London. And, and Pretty much, we were looking for angles that reminded us to Mexico City, you know, like to uh, accept the posh upper classes and stuff that is very, it had to be very iconic, London. Um, it was about trying to, to bring the third world into, into, into London. Together with that, it was very important that each location had a, symb a, symbol a symbolic uh, meaning. 
uh, from a marble arch, uh, uh, not marble arch, um, since Trafalgar going into, into the mall, where the upper classes, they have their private parks and, and entertainment. Um, to, to the museum, yeah. To, to, to Battersea, you know, as, as, as something that is a, 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 a it was a, a station of a decay technology that now is turned into, into a private enterprise. Of, uh, of, of art, that was the other element was, the, 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 as you say, the, the talking about how when you extract art from its context, if it loses its meaning, you know, where it is very different, different see uh, the Guernica uh, uh, of Picasso in its actual setting, that's seen as a background, just as a, as a wallpaper in, in, uh, in your dining hall, you know, as an ornament. So, um, yeah, that was, uh, it, but it was, the, the work was about trying to create this, uh, to bring London into, actually, into what it is today. Unfortunately, it happened too quickly. Okay, just a, a quick, because there's so many people in the, out in the audience who hasn't seen the movie. Yeah, yeah. You were this. spoiling it now. No, I didn't spoil it. No, 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 not about spoiling it. No, you, know, you, you spoil it. I didn't it, talk about it. <laughs> Um, and everything is filmed, so it turns out that also the talk is as prophetic to the film <laughs> as the film is to contemporary Europe. Um, but you can rewatch everything, so just to, to point that out. Um, what? Yeah, 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 but this I, I is... I agree. <laughs> but you know why? You I know agree. why? It's, it's but you know why? Because we come from the future. So in the sense that the end is starting at the uh, beginning. And actually, just, just to make this whole experience cool, we're going to play the film backwards. <laughs> so no, there's that, another... A, if I can just add something, this is what you can see. Uh, a very crucial part, not of only of this movie, but uh, of, of your work, is humor. And you will see that in the movie, the only okay, thing which... we should see it better. <laughs> <laughs> so there's another question here. Yeah. Well, yeah, but maybe yeah. we slowly. Yeah, it's just. Uh, yeah, yeah. Let's I, play I, the movie. Yes. I, well, that was the. I, yeah, is that. I don't no, we cannot continue the Q and A afterwards. No, because no, we have to do it otherwise. We will start I, shooting I, the I movie after. <laughs> I think maybe one last question, and then yeah, we yeah. and then we disappear. And who else disappears? The Mexicans are waiting. So, uh, just uh, one more question regarding the theme. As you spoke about a metaphorical infertility, but then uh, there's also a literal infertility as a theme throughout the film. It, for me, it was one of the first times I saw that as a potential doom scenario for mankind in the in the near future, which has now also been used in Margaret Atwood's The Handmaid's Tale, which is done very nicely on TV. Um, when you came up with the, the concept, do you feel that that's one of the most existential dreads of society that we will not be able to reproduce or it's nature's biggest punishment for us to, to stop reproducing or is, is that something that... that no, I, I didn't. I mean, I, I, don't, I don't see it as a, as, a, as a threat. I don't think that that's what is going to, to, to kill us at the end. It's, I think that we're going to... We're very, very in, ingenious how to do it ourselves. Uh, uh, but Suicide the, the, kids. The, the, yeah. <laughs> but but um, no, it was, uh, the, the, I, I have to say that when I read the, the concept of the, of, of the P.D. James thing, I found it that it had a, a very metaphorical element, a very meta metaphorical value, the, the, that, that, that whole thing. Also, nature I don't think that punishes. You know, and nature is nature. It doesn't judge anything. Nature is. And nature will keep on going. I mean, the world is going, maybe humanity may, may disseminate and, and, and the culture as we know uh, end. And nature will, will reflourish, you know. It's, uh, I, think the, I don't think that nature is, the, is, is really a problem. You will see in the film, yes, we deal with en environmental stuff. But you will see, it's not a spoiler. You, you know, it's, 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 it's a... Cows. A, a, because it's part of the chaos. That, of no, 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 where, cows. 
Ah, yeah. I was spoiling. Well, no, they, no, yeah. Well, no, but then maybe for people who uh, hasn't seen it, it's, it's not bad to know. Is the, the cows is because in the in the UK, I don't know how how known is this about the dead cow, the mad cow disease that they have to burn all these cows and and uh, so we were just making references stuff that was happening that has references to unfortunately massive graves and stuff that are found and they are burned the same way. Anyway, I really. Thank you for being here. I completely agree that uh, next time, and let's talk uh, to our fantastic host, uh, that next time it would be great if this happens at the end, because it's uh, <laughs> uh, 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 <laughs> But I know also that it was not a space. I, I just happened to be here to, to come, and, and it was organized the last moment. They run a very tight schedule. You're, you're so. always welcome back. Okay, there you go. <laughs> Thank you. I would like to uh, wish you all uh, a very thought-provoking screening and uh, uh, be on the lookout for Alfonso uh, tonight, still in, uh, in Amsterdam, <laughs> roaming the streets. Okay. <laughs> a warm applause for them both.